so I'm just here to give you guys a reading update. Um, I just put a bunch of b-roll footage of my camping trip and like I thought I didn't actually have a chance to do reading updates because um, I did a lot less reading on this trip than I thought I was going to. So first of all, I completely, like a dumbass, forgot to bring The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin. So I didn't bring a physical book on this trip to read. So that was my first mistake. And then my second mistake was I relied on the audiobooks from my phone. And there was a good part of the trip where we were like up at the top of these mountains and there's no internet connection. And even though I tried downloading the audiobook, it wouldn't work without like any kind of Wi-Fi or internet whatsoever. So there was a good part of the trip where I couldn't listen to even my audiobook. So not a lot of reading got done on this trip. I enjoyed it a lot with Husby. We really enjoyed just like being away from our home and just taking some time to reset. And then also we didn't really get a chance to celebrate our fifth year anniversary last month um, because he was working, I was working, and we couldn't really go out or do anything anyways with everything going on in the world. And so this trip was kind of like our way of celebrating our anniversary. So that was fun. Um, I did read or I did listen to a little bit of my audiobook, um, especially like on the drive up and back. And while we were in the cabin, we did have some Wi-Fi. Um, so I got through about 40% of You Had Me at Ola by Alexis Daria. Okay, so I'll tell you guys a little bit about the audiobook because I'm kind of still like at the beginning of the plot and I have some theories of how it's going to end up going. So You Had Me at Ola has to do with our two protagonists. We have Jasmine Rodriguez and Ashton Suarez. And so both of them are leads in this Latino... Um, TV show which is supposed to be streaming on this service that essentially is like Netflix. They call it Streamflix. And it's supposed to be this like new modern day telenovela kind of show, basically like Jane the Virgin. And it's supposed to show like good Latinx representation. And they're both um, Puerto Rican. And Jasmine, our female main character, she is Puerto Rican and Filipina. And um, Ashton, our male protagonist, he is full Puerto Rican. And so, um, first of all, the cover of this book made me think that it was YA. Um, this is not young adult. This is pure adult romance. Um, I basically stopped at the point where they had, like, the beginning of their first sex scene. And, like, this book is so steamy. Like... It is rated R. You should not be reading this if you are a small child. No, 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 no. It is, but it's good. It's some real good smexy scenes here. Um, but basically, they're co-stars on this new TV show that they're recording together, and they are starting to get attracted to each other, but Jasmine um, just had this really messy public breakup and she's all over the tabloid magazines and she wants to be taken seriously in her career and so she has vowed um, not to have like any flings, like romantic things, or basically do anything to get negative press. And then Ashton, on the other hand, he is a big telenovela star. He's trying to make it into Hollywood. And he's had issues before where he's had flings with co-workers and they ended bad. And so he also wants to have that as like an established rule, not to get distracted and not to also let anybody in because he has a lot of guarded secrets. So we're at the point where they've already like met and they had their like initial misunderstanding, which I'm really happy that they had one of those misunderstandings where it didn't end up being like enemies to lovers like they didn't hate each other because of a misunderstanding no it was like an actual misunderstanding like he bumped into her and spilled coffee on her outfit and she was okay with it but they just had like a rough first impressions which is how misunderstandings actually happen and so I really liked how it was starting off with because the romance wasn't like super stereotypical and kind of annoying. It was like nice modern romance. It was refreshing. Like obviously they're both really good looking. They're really like lusting after each other but they're both like no we can't have a fling with our co-worker. We have to stay focused. And then of course you know 
things end up happening anyways. And so now we're at the beginning of one of those scenes. And so really enjoying the book so far. Um, this is a nice like palette cleanser and this is also a total mood read, but I'm enjoying myself. And now that I'm back from my trip, I'm going to spend the next couple of days listening to this audiobook and finishing it before even starting on the obelisk gate. So yeah, gonna give you guys some more reading updates, but in the meantime, I have to unpack everything, so better go do that while I listen to my audiobook. So I am out getting lunch and I got my coffee and so I figured I might as well just do the vlog update here in my car. I figured at this point that's just the easiest. So I did finish um, You Had Me at Ola by Alexis Daria and I gave it a four stars. It was the adult romance book. Um, Okay, let me talk about first what I didn't like with this book because it's very much like a me thing, just like a personal preference as a reader. Um, and other people might have really enjoyed this aspect of the book, but for me, I didn't like it. And so that's what kind of took it down in terms of my enjoyment level with this book. So the big thing about this book is that it's a social commentary on the lack of proper and respectable Latinx representation in media, in movies and TV shows, and basically any form of media. And this was very much hit in the nail with this book because the two protagonists are Latinos, Latinx representation. They're starring in a Latinx TV show that's on the Netflix streaming service. And the whole time in the book, the characters themselves are talking about the lack of proper representation. Um, of Latinos in media and how them doing the show is such a big thing and such a huge cultural movement for their people and to bring that proper representation. Um, while I liked that this was the theme of the social commentary, the way that the author went about talking about it throughout the book was very in your face and not subtle about it at all. And it got to the point where it was almost too much social commentary on it. And I just wanted to read an adult romance. And it's like, I, I totally like the fact that authors are bringing more important topics. So I like that authors are bringing more important social commentary topics into their books. I do think that's really great. But I personally really like it when the social commentary is done in a more subtle, natural way. And me personally the way that this author did it was very loud in your face and almost too obvious and so it's i kind of got over it real quick and so i was really not liking it whenever the author was bringing up these points again in the narrative like for instance all of like the conversations where the characters are supposed to be bonding and building their attraction towards each other they were also taking the time to talk about um just struggles they faced with being latinos in the media and so it's just like the author almost took like every opportunity to bring up the struggle of Latinx representation in like every conversation that the main characters have with each other. And it was the source of like all of the major conflict in the book. So it was just basically overdone for me. And that's honestly the main reason why I'm not giving this a five stars, just because enjoyment wise, that kind of bothered me how much they were putting it in the book. And so kind of took away from that but in terms of like the characters themselves and the romance like it was a plus I really liked it I really enjoyed both main characters they were really good main characters that were relatable you wanted to root for they of course had their flaws they were perfectly human but they learned from their mistakes and I could relate to both of them like Jasmine trying to be her independent woman but falling in love so easily and learning not to rely on the idea of love to fulfill her like related with that so hard and then of course our male lead um ashton he suffers from anxiety and he has some ptsd trauma and just the way that he goes about with his anxiety i could also relate to and so i really enjoyed both of the main characters really enjoyed the side characters i did enjoy you know the fact that we had a full cast of Latino characters. That was great. Um, and of course, it was adult romance, and so it, it did, without fail, go into the very cliche um, 
part three breakup where the characters had some kind of conflict and they broke up and then at the very end they got back together and I knew it was happening. It was nice and cliche, but I still loved it. And best part were the steamy scenes. The sex scenes were so good and they were multiple and they were all hot and steamy and this author knows how to write sex scenes. That's all I gotta say. So do I recommend this book? Yes, absolutely. It's a really good book. Really well written, really great characters, really good romance. Did it have a little bit too much social commentary for my taste? Yes. But if you like that kind of thing in your books and you think there should be more of it in your books, you might actually really enjoy this. So yes, I do recommend that you pick up You Had Me at Ola by Alexis Daria. And this weekend, um, I am going to start The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin, which is the second book in the Broken Earth trilogy. And I'm so excited to start this book. You guys know how much I loved the fifth season. This is going to be one of like my top favorite books of the year. And I'm so hyped for The Opolis Gate. And really sad that I wasn't able to bring this book on my camping trip. But at the same time, did I really need like a deep book that was going to make me sad on like a weekend getaway? No. So I'm going to enjoy reading it this weekend. Um, we have a couple of days left for November. So this is most likely going to be my last read for November. But really excited to get to it. And hopefully I can pick up the third and final installment of the trilogy for December and finish off the year with it. But yeah, I'm just really excited for the Obelisk Gate and I hope it does not disappoint. So hey guys, even though it's Sunday, I didn't give you guys any reading update um, when I started The Opolis Gate by N.K. Jemisin, but I finished the book already. It only took me two days to finish this book. I read about 75% of it yesterday on Saturday, and then I finished the last part this morning, and I got things to say. Okay, first of all, I'm only going to be giving this a four stars. I know. I'm also really surprised. There's the brownie who decided to join me for this review. I'm really surprised that I'm only giving this four stars. And I'll tell you guys, the main reason is that this fell under middle book syndrome. Okay, it's the middle book in the trilogy. And so therefore, it's more character driven instead of plot driven. And ultimately, okay, I'm having a hard time articulating my thoughts about this book. I really liked this book. It still had the same amazing writing style that I love from N.K. Jemisin. The character is amazing. The world building, we get so much more info on how the magic system works and just the other species that we have in this universe. And it was still really, really good. Don't get me wrong. Um, I think the biggest thing with this book was that the plot was a lot slower because our main protagonist was in the same place the entire book versus in the previous book she was traveling a lot and so I think that that plot and just the movement of it helped me with my enjoyment of the book and then we did get two new protagonists um, in this book which I really liked and we got their point of view which I also really enjoyed um, but I think overall there was just not a lot of movement from the characters they were all pretty much in the same place as the entire book um, and so even though a lot was developing in terms of like how the story was going to go action wise, there wasn't a lot. And so for me, it was a little bit more boring than the first book in that sense. And then also, I really didn't get a lot of those emotional moments. Like in the first book, there was three or four times where I had to stop reading and just like shove the book aside because it just left me emotionally raw on the inside and I didn't get those same reactions with this book there wasn't any of those like shocking emotional moments I think there was one but other than that I was just I think the fifth season I had such high standards for it like it raised my standards so much it was 10 out of 10 and I think I was expecting the same which is not fair because you know this book was still amazingly good it was just not as great as the fifth season so Ultimately, I'm just giving it a four stars. So yeah, I'm going to be finishing up this week's reading vlog here. I'm literally laying on my floor for my bedroom. And my dog's there asleep. But my house is a mess since my mom moved in. And so 
we're rearranging everything and there's boxes everywhere and so my filming area isn't really suitable for filming so I'm just gonna end the vlog here sitting on my bedroom floor but yeah I mean I really did enjoy the obelisk gate give it four stars and then I read you had me at Ola which I also gave four stars so still pretty good solid reads this week so not disappointed with my reads so yeah, it's the end of November. There's only like a couple more days, and so I'm not going to read anything the next couple of days, but I am going to start my December TBR to pick what books I'm going to read, and I'm going to do a game this time around, so you guys see that on my channel. And yeah, really excited for December. I want to read a lot of winter fantasy books, and then also I want to read The Stone Sky, which is the third book and the final book in the Broken Earth trilogy, so I can finish that series. So yeah, really excited for next month's reading. So yeah, if you guys have made it this far, remember to like, subscribe, comment below, um, join me for some more bookish content. I'm Millie, and thank you guys for jumping into the Nook Realm. Bye!